Okay, so you've done some basic bonding. You are starting to get into the, some of the more complicated ones. You are looking at some of the ones with double and triple bonds, and, and then you start encountering all these ones with lots of options. And, and a lot of you are coming to me and you're saying, okay, wait, I don't get it, Mr. Siegel. Like, there's got to be something going on here. Why can't I just do this? Well, there are other rules. Imagine layers of an onion where the most important stuff is at the heart of the onion. Uh, well, I'm just pulling back the outside layers slowly but surely and making you comfortable with it. So let's talk about molecular geometry. Now, molecular geometry is governed by uh, what's called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR. So what this is basically saying is the shape of a molecule is based on the fact that the electron pairs that are on the outside of the atom, on the outside layer of the onion, those electron pairs that are on the outermost layer are going to orient themselves so that they have the least amount of repulsions as possible. So they're pushing against each other the least. That's why certain things will never bond together, like oxygen to oxygen does not like to bond together because it puts the electrons too close together. And because those electrons get really close together, they tend to push apart, creating different shapes. It's one of the reasons why water is the way that water is. And we'll talk about water on a later slide. So again, like I said, electrons orient themselves to reduce the repulsions. That's what valence shell electron pair repulsion theory stands for. Break it down, electron pairs, pairs of electrons, repel, repel push away, and the valence means they're on the outside layer. So molecules form so the atoms are as far apart as possible. This is why we're going to get different shapes throughout. This is why everything just doesn't look like a conga line straight across your page as you're writing it. Okay, now there are um, a bunch of shapes that we're going to have to do. So this is actually one, this is a big chart that I couldn't fit on one slide. So this chart actually has three lines on this page, and you're going to put two more lines on the next page. So make a chart that has uh, this, title, this title line and then put five slots underneath it. And I'm going to go through them individually. I'm going to pop up some video so you can see what the molecules actually look like instead of just, um, just drawing them out on paper. Okay, so bonding atoms. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do with two bonding atoms. And I'm going to show you why in a second why we don't deal with just one bonding atom. So two bonding atoms refers to two atoms bonded to a central atom. Now, when I do this, if you think about standard geometry, if two atoms want to be as far apart from each other as possible, they are going to form a linear geometry. So that linear geometry will be two molecules in a dead straight line. Now, if it's a line, well, think about geometry for a second, folks. A line has what angle? Yeah, exactly. You have to, it's got to be 180 degrees. So it's going to be 180 degrees. An example of this is BeCl2. And don't really worry about the examples per se. Just understand that this is going to be a molecule that has to orient itself with two bonds. They're going to be as far apart from each other as possible. So let's jump to, uh, I'm going to show you a picture. Actually, I'm going to show you a model. And that model is going to show you what these look like. So let's jump to that now. OK, so I said to you, OK, we can't have a molecule that has only that has to have two bonding atoms. That's what all molecules have to have, a minimum of two atoms bonded to a central atom. This is a molecule that does not have two atoms bonded to a central atom. You can see atom number one here and atom number two here. So there's only two atoms total in this molecule. Now, standard geometry class, why does this not work? Well, think about it. In order to have an angle, a, a degrees on an angle, what does all angles have to have? They have to have three parts, an A, a B, and a C. So you have to have a vertex of an angle. Well, this doesn't have a vertex. This only has two things. So this would be an example of something like sodium chloride, NaCl. Two atoms, that's it. There's no shape, there's no geometry, there's nothing. So this doesn't work. So we get rid of this. So instead, let's put in something like this. Okay? So this would be an example of BeCl2. Notice that you have one central atom and two bonding atoms. One here and one here. Okay? And here's your 180 degrees. So your molecule, your angle goes from this bond all the way around to that bond over there. And that's where your 180 degrees comes from. Okay, so this guy would be your CL, this guy would be your CL, and this guy in the middle would be your BE. Don't really worry about colors. I'm going to use a variety of colors. Colors mean nothing here. It's just a model. Okay, and notice that no matter which way I, I turn it, because that's always one of the questions, like, oh, what if I turn it a different way? It's always going to be 180 degrees. You know, even if I stand it on end, guess what? It's still 180 degrees. Okay, you just can't see it as well. So that's, this is what something like BECL2 will look like. Okay, so let's jump to our next 
shape. So I'm going to add a third atom to our central atom. Now here's the thing. I could just plop it in there, but it's not going to form a geometry that makes it the where the atoms are farthest apart. So it actually moves the atoms around. I have a little video that's going to demonstrate this a little bit better. So this shape is going to be something called trigonal planar. Okay. And that trigonal planar is going to have 120 degree bond angles. Okay, so you have to think about, again, back to the geometry, and I'll show this in a second. A little trigonal planar forms a little triangle. A third of a triangle, 360 degrees, is 120 degrees. It's where it comes from. So it's not important you know where it comes from, just know that it is what it is. So an example of this would be BF3. Now let's jump back to that model. This is an example of BF3. So the boron is in the center and you have one, two, and three fluorines attached to it. Okay, Very different than our BeCl2 that was there before. So notice that BeCl2, again, is straight. So when those that third atom comes in, it causes the other two to bend and push towards each other. Because remember, they're trying to reduce their repulsions down. So 180 degrees doesn't work. If I just brought in another one straight into here, those angles would be 90. So that system doesn't work, and I need to go with something like this. So now the bond angle, again, is from bond to bond. So that's going to be 120 degrees between those two bonds there. And it doesn't matter because they're all equal. And it forms a little triangle, okay, from point to point to point to point. Forms your little triangle. Okay, so now let's add a fourth atom. When I add a fourth atom, it is going to be a tetrahedral molecule. Now, before, again, if, if I just add a fourth, it looks like it would all be flat, but it can't be flat. It's got to be, it's got to take on a three-dimensional shape. Remember, these are molecules that exist in real life, so they're going to take up three-dimensional space. These bond angles now start to get a little funky here. So it actually comes out to 109.5 degrees. And an example of this is methane, CH4. So like I said, normally if I brought in a fourth, you know, if I just take a fourth one and slide it in here, this might bend around to find to form four corners of a square, but that's not the best shape. The best shape is if they come together and form what's called a tetrahedral molecule. So I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see it. So this is what a tetrahedral molecule looks like. So I've got one, two, three, and then a fourth one over here on the side. So there's now those are the bond angles that are 109.5. So if I go from this bond ang bond to this bond. I have 109.5 degrees between them. A lot better than the 90 degrees that would have occurred if I had just made it a flat molecule, a two-dimensional molecule. Now the other thing about this is, and it's tough to see from my, draw, from my shape because it's coming from above, but this actually forms a little pyramid. It's a little tripod pyramid, and then there's one thing coming straight up. So this, is like the, this one is the top point of the pyramid, and these are the three bottom points of the pyramid. Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to show that on this little drawing on this little description. I'm sorry. It's hard to show this in this little video, but it really does exist. You can see it kind of in that formation right there. If I turn it on its side, you can see the three points going one, two, and three. Those are the three bottoms, and then this guy is the top of my pyramid over here. Now let's get more complicated. Now here's the thing about valence shell. Up until this point, we've only been dealing with what we would expect from the periodic table, but we're actually now we're going to get into five bonding atoms. So now I'm going to bond five things to a central atom. Now, if you think about standard Lewis symbols, the Lewis symbol that has the greatest number of possible bonds is carbon with four single dots. Now, in order to form five bonds, I must therefore have five dots, five single dots. Well, that's not an easy feat to have happen, to have five single dots. So this is where we get into what's called a hybrid orbital. Now, Hybrid orbitals are in a totally separate video, so once you're done this, just write this down for the time being, and then go and watch the hybrid orbitals and see what I'm talking about. This molecule forms a trigonal bipyramidal shape. It's a three-sided pyramid, and there's two of them, one on the top and one on the bottom. The bond angles here take on both a linear and trigonal planar shape. It actually looks like a linear was just rammed right through the center of a trigonal planar. An example here is PCL5. Now again, if you draw the Lewis symbol for phosphorus, Lewis symbol for phosphorus only has three single dots and then a pair. Hybrid orbitals would explain where this comes from. So let's jump to the video. So here's a model of PCL5. So I'm going to hold it this way for the, for the moment so you can see it better. 
Here we go. If I hold it this way, you can see it better. So you can see the one, two, three atoms of that trigonal planar shape. But then if I turn it on its side, you'll see the other two atoms. So here are the top and the bottom of that linear geometry that's in there. And it kind of, I always describe it as it kind of looks like a modified Jax when you're like a kid. It kind of looks like that a little bit. And it makes, you know, like tilts back and forth um, when you do it, depending on how you're, you're orienting it. Okay? So that gives me my five. You can kind of see it. I'm trying to hold it in such a way that you can see all of it. So there's all five. Again, uh, three of them, one, two, and three are on the same plane. And then these two here and here are both in a linear shape around them. Okay, and then finally is uh, Big Poppy. The, the big one is our octahedral molecule. Now, I hate to say this. If you look at most of the shapes, I hate to do this to you. Um, I didn't come up with the names, but if you look at most of the sh shapes, trigonal, planar, tri, three bonding atoms. Tetrahedral, tetra, four bonding atoms. Tri, trigonal, bi, pyramidal, tri, bi, three plus two is five bonding atoms. You get to six and you get to octahedral. Now remember, it's based around the shape, not the actual bonding atoms. So even though there's six bonding atoms, it forms two four-sided pyramids, which would be an eight-sided shape. The bond angles here simplify themselves greatly, and they become 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And an example of this is SF6. Again, hybrid orbitals kind of, exp kind of explain this. So again, just write this down for the time being. Now, let me show you what the model looks like. So here is octahedral. Now, I purposely made them two different colors on the outside because I want to di distinguish between the top and bottom and the four in the center. So let me hold this in such a way. OK. So you can see that there are four atoms in a square shape around the middle of the molecule. And then when I turn it, you can see that there's one on the bottom and one on the top as well to form that linear throat. Now, technically, all sides of an octahedral look exactly the same. I only oriented the colors so that you can see the difference between the four in the middle and the one on the top and bottom. But technically, no matter which way I hold it, I always get the same geometry. When I do this, you can still see there's the four even though the greens have moved, okay? So 90 degrees would be from something like the middle to the top, which is hard to see. 90 degrees is actually any between any two points, any two adjacent points. So if I go from here to here, it's 90 degrees. And then 180 degrees would be across. So if I went from this bond, this bond, all the way to this bond, it'd be 180 degrees between these two, but only 90 degrees between these two. And so like standard geometry comes into play here. These are not the funky ones. For Like I said, for right now, don't worry about where the angles come from, just remember the angles. Now those are the main geometries that we deal with. Now there's some other ones that we have to deal with, which I'm going to show in a very short podcast after this, uh, that deal with what happens with if I start having atoms that have non-bonding electron pairs, like an oxygen or a nitrogen and whatnot.